introduced by your lovely sister, Allie, teacher we extraordinaire. Love Allie. You guys are so different, which is, I think, don't you think that's almost the sign of really good parenting? My dad always had this advice of, you know, raise the child that you have and who you want them to be and who they want to be versus raising the child that you think you're supposed to raise. When you were thinking about going into kind of a more non-traditional route versus something more expected, what was that path like? Were you being encouraged at the time? At the time, you know, I mean, now there's this movement of, you know, feminism and women working and having careers and having children. And I I do remember this energy and these, you know, sort of this this feeling of everyone kind of being like, oh, well, well will she stop working when she has children? Or mm. will she ever have children if she's working this much? 20 years ago was very different than today. And I think that one of the reasons I've always fought so hard to create an environment for not just creativity, but a place where women can have children and careers and a balanced, hopefully balanced life. And, you know, and, and one of the things I'm most proud of in my career is that at Alice and Olivia, we have a 96% retention rate of women having babies and coming back to work. And I think the reason I'm so proud of that was because I felt that I felt like people were kind of like, how is she going to ever find a husband if she's working so hard? Or how is she ever going to be a good mom if, you know, she's running a company and and my question to everyone out there who said that is why don't you ask a man the same question why can you be a great dad and a ceo but you can't be a great mom and a ceo and no one ever ask a man when they have children how they're going to balance that with their career and i think that the conversation that needs to come up in today's world is making sure that every woman when she gets married when she decides she wants children if she also wants to have a career that those expectations are set with her partner and i hope that companies continue to establish standards and establish environments that allow for not just women to be good parents but for men and women to be good parents so just the other day, I was listening to Adele say this incredible statement, which is just this notion of being a house that is so solid, not a single storm can move you. And I knew we were going to sit down and have this conversation. It made me think of you and your business because you're now coming up on your 20 year anniversary, which is just so unbelievable. Crazy. It's crazy. And you've really built a foundation. You've built this rock solid foundation that's been able to weather storms and kind of come what may. How did you create that? It, you know, it wasn't overnight, right? It was a lot of hard work, a combination of both creativity, hard work, infrastructure, and just really believing that there was more for women to have in their wardrobe than what existed, you know, when I started. And I think that when I began Alice and Olivia, like there really wasn't a contemporary business out there yet, right? Like you had jeans, you had t-shirts, you had sort of fast mass fashion. But what we really did over the last couple of decades was establish what contemporary fashion is for women today. It was like you had designer and then you had like gap. There was like nothing really in between. And um, I think Alice and Livia and DVF at the time, and Theory, and you know, we sort of came in and created this world of modern fashion, like what women want to wear. And what I always sort of looked for when I'm designing is, you know, what does a woman need in her wardrobe and how am I allowing her to express herself through her clothes in a way that she can feel her best each day. And very early on, I felt like one of the things that was most important to me was that when women come into our office or come into our stores, they leave feeling really good. I don't want a woman to feel intimidated or upset. Along with that, we built a global empire. We've opened stores around the world. We've built a big e-com business. We've built a big wholesale business, but we did it step by step. In the first years of business, I was like, okay, like it was my job to kind of design and make clothes. Then it was like design and make and sell them to wholesale. Then it was like, okay, we're gonna be retailers also. Then we're gonna be DTC retailers and global retailers. Now we're entering this phase of retail universe where every brand over the next decade is like going to be their own HSN. You know, yeah. we're going to be selling things online via video. We're going to be 
creating content and TV shows to sell products. How have I survived? It's by continuing to be creative and invent. How could someone start? Like, what is the best place to start in terms of a founder thinking about how she presents herself as an extension of her brand and business? And, and that's important, right? When you are a founder, you are your brand. Right. I mean, whether you're a clothing designer or a jewelry designer or an interior designer or whether you're a doctor, you need to believe in what you're doing and what that means. And, and I think clothes, no matter what career path you take, are a way to express yourself. You know, like when you walk out onto the street in all black, you're giving out a vibe. When you walk out into the street in rainbow colors, you're giving out a vibe. And when you are representing the company or brand that you are, that needs to be a vibe too. Consistency and branding is a lesson we all have to remind ourselves of and, and be really, you know, sort of adherent to in, in any industry. You're exceedingly positive. You've got that attitude that that emanates and yet you're not a Pollyanna. You take very serious stances on social issues. You've got a super serious business. How do you cultivate that positive mindset and what are some rituals, practices that you think others can do to employ also? You know, I've done Ashtanga yoga for 20 years. Every single morning, it clears my head. It I don't know me. how you move like that, girl. <laughs> like, I've never but seen anything like it. I think it. that every day when we wake up, we make choices. Where we're going to go, what we're going to do. And when we think about the world and when we think about our careers or we think about those decisions we're going to make, you make another decision, which is to look at the positive side of something or the negative side. You could be very depressed about breaking up with someone, but are you going to be depressed about that or excited about the next person you're going to make? We didn't have a great week in business, but are we gonna really harp on all the things we did wrong? Or are we gonna take a look at what we did right and build off of that? What's something positive that happened and how do we take that and build from there? You're a mom and your kid's having a really hard time. They're doing terribly in school, but they're great at running. Are you gonna focus completely and be so hard on yourself and them about not being great in school? Or are you gonna make them feel really good about being a great runner? And I think if you take that perspective nine out of 10 times during the day, or even seven out of 10 times during the day, you're going to be more positive. How do you think about the balance between being front and center versus behind the scenes, doing the work that you love, like rolling up the sleeves and actually being the doer and the worker? I think like social media brought a, uh, a little bit of like a presence and fame and notoriety for designers that didn't exist before, right? Like people would see your picture in a magazine before, all of a sudden now you're everywhere. For me, that was sort of unintentional. As a brand, as a public figure, you have this platform and you have this ability to inspire people and help people. And I guess at this point in my career, that's fun for me now versus in the past because I feel like there's more of a purpose to it. It's not just like, oh, well, let me go get my picture taken. It's more like, hey, we're building something and we're doing something that is really about inspiring women as much as it is dressing them. When we do do, you know, sort of press and we do share a little bit more of the personal story behind the brand, it's it's for a purpose. And I think that's important. And I always give that advice to like entrepreneurs and um, anyone even in the public spectrum. I'm like, you know, if you choose to do press with a purpose, you won't really make a mistake. When you just try to get a lot of press, you'll probably regret it. Karen, you are a cyclone of creativity. I mean, the velocity at which you create is un. <laughs> Believable. It's like bam, 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 bam. And for someone who isn't, how can they get in touch with their creative side, their creativity, have permission in that? I really believe that everyone is creative in their own way. Some people know how to style, some people know how to draw, some people know how to paint, some people know how to sew, some people are better at, you know, love music, but everyone has a part of them that is creative. And some people are just creative business minds. I mean, my father-in-law is an incredibly creative business mind. He's not, 
you know, dressing up in feathers and crazy ball gowns or anything, but like he's got the way his mind works is creative. All the things that I used to think weren't productive, going on walks, you start to almost create this space where things then start to flow through you a bit more, like inspiration kind of feeds on inspiration, which feeds on inspirations. I think for creativity to flow, like oxygen needs to flow through your body. Mm -hmm. So whether it's walking or yoga or just taking moments during the day to breathe, you clear your mind. You And by the way, I'm not always great at doing this because I get going during the day and I've got like 17,000 things opening. But if you can take that, like that hour in the morning that I do yoga, for me, just like resets my body, resets my head, you know, whether my kids have been terrorists or someone's mad at me or whatever it is, it's just that moment that you take to really reset and, and center. And it sounds sort of cliche, but it works. Can you talk about the process of going from idea to execution and taking yeah. something to fruition, whether it's a photo shoot or a marketing plan or a social good initiative? Yeah. A lot of people have ideas, but they don't know how to run it through. If you put creatives in an environment where they have structure and they have almost like partners in creating some infrastructure and organization around them, you're going to make them more successful. I like there to be a lot of process in place so that creative has the time and space to be creative. So when we have a shoot, do we come up with 20 crazy ideas, but we put in a series of organizational processes. So we actually execute that in a way that is, I guess, effective, right? So I think it's just about taking the ideas, breaking them down, and along the way being like, okay, what's our end goal and what do we want to get done? Can you talk a little bit about your themes and vignettes for your campaigns? I love creating vignettes and also like tablescaping. Those are kind of things that are just like fun for me. But I want when girls or women see our imagery, our content, I want it to make them smile. I don't want it to be like intimidating. I don't want it to be overwhelming. I want people to see it and smile. And I think that if with every piece of content I create or piece of clothing I make that I do that, I've done a good job. You've also had just unbelievable collaborations. Who do you like to collaborate most with? I mean, I love collaborations with brands that I love, but also artists that I love. I mean, I think some really iconic ones, like when we did Basquiat or Keith Haring, but I've also collaborated with friends like Lola Schnabel, who's one of my best friends and favorite artists. And I've done things like we have a pajama collaboration launching this week with Posh Peanut because they were like my favorite kids' pajamas. So I kind of like to mix it up and do things that I think my customer will appreciate. We've done a lot of things with our like Stace Face logo. We've done case to five phone cases. We've done every collab we do is sort of just meant to be sort of fun in its own way. Like ring pops. I'm like, okay, like we can have people that get to experience Alice and Olivia with a ring pop or a mask that can't maybe afford all of our clothes, but they get to experience some of the fun and whimsy of our brand in other ways. What would you like to see women entrepreneurs doing more of? I would like to see every female entrepreneur fighting for other female entrepreneurs to come up beneath them. And I also want to see female entrepreneurs not just being martyrs. You know, it's not like I'm going to do it all. It's no, I'm going to change the game so that we all can do it all which is what I sort of was speaking about in the beginning, which is establishing a different sort of norm for what being a mom or a dad is. I think that when we talk about making change in the workplace, we cannot ignore making changes at home. On that note, favorite BOSS that's inspiring you right now in the present moment. I was with Anna Wintour this morning. We met the new governor of New York today. She is a ball of energy. She is fighting to bring business and retail and creativity back to New York. So I don't know her personally, but I'm really inspired by her at the moment. And I think seeing Anna this morning, there was this moment where I was like, wow, she has endured through such changing times. While everyone sees her as this fashion ice queen, she's also raised two wonderful children 
and paved the way for so many women. But I think boss of all bosses, seeing Hillary Clinton and the path she's taken even in post losing the election has been amazing. I think that when you watch the documentary about her, like whatever your political inclinations are, because I hate getting into political discussions online. It was unbelievable. It, it was, was un unbelievable. And you see a woman who was a real game changer. And I only wish that documentary had come out earlier in her career because you saw someone that was a great parent, a great loyal wife, and who took this amazing career path that became overshadowed by the crazy, trivial tabloid drama that our world pays more attention to than the merits of a woman. When you look at what she's really done over her life, it's pretty amazing. Here's to the next 20 for you.